DDR4 RAM overclocking guide for Samsung BDI for AMD. So let's start maybe with why you should overclock your RAM. So let's take a look at these results. As you can see, this screenshot shows us the FPS with RAM overclocking versus the RAM overclocking. As you can see, the main difference that we can see is in 1% and 0.2% lows. So as you can see, it's a very important thing when it comes to your lows. Then let's take a look at the RAM timings. This is a screenshot from the range. Just by changing a few timings here and there. So going just 400 megahertz higher and going one to two points of latency only on the main timings can guarantee you better FPS. Let me now explain to you the basics of RAM overclocking. So when it comes to RAM, we have three most important values. We got speed, we got latency, and we got the voltage. When it comes to the speed, the higher, the better, obviously. When it comes to latency, these are all these numbers, CL14, 14, 14, 14, 34, for example. The lower, the better. Voltage. For higher speeds and higher overclocks will need more voltage, but more voltage will cause more temperature. So be careful with that and make sure that you have a good cooler. So this RAM overclocking guide is for a certain RAM type. There is one certain RAM type that will get you the best FPS, the best latency, and the best performance for Valorant. And that is Samsung BDI. What is Samsung BDI? The company of your RAM sticks doesn't really matter. So it, it doesn't matter if it's GSQ, if it's Corsair, if it's Kingston, if it's HyperX. The only thing that matters is where the chips were produced. So we have four main options. We got Samsung, we got Hynix, we got Micron, and we got Nanya. We want to get Samsung BDI chips, as you can see. Okay, cool. But how do you make sure that you get Samsung BDI? That's actually pretty easy. So here we have some examples of Samsung BDI kits. If you get those RAM kits with those specs, you'll be guaranteed to get Samsung BDI kits. So example. 3200 MHz, CL14, 14, 14, 34 at 1.35 volts. Then we got 4000 MHz at CL16, 16, 16, 36 at 1.45 volts. And then we got 4400 MHz, CL19, 19, 19, 39 at 1.45 volts. How do you choose them? It's actually pretty easy. You go to a website, PC Part Picker, then you go to Choose Memory Tab, and then on the left side, you want to scroll down lower and here you want to select the timing. So as you can see, 14, 14, 40, 34 here. Then we got 16, 16, 16, 36. Then 19, 19, 19, 39. Then you scroll fully up. Then you have to choose your country. So for me, it's going to be Germany. And as you can see, we have all the RAM sticks there. So for example, this is the cheapest RAM kit. So you can click on it. And as you can see, you can get it for just 85 euros. You can grab any of them and they will overclock just fine, and they will also be Samsung BDI. So cool, you got the RAM kits, but what do you have to do? Having good airflow is very, very important. For this, you wanna get an additional RAM fan for your memory, something like that. As you can see, you can go to AliExpress, get it for around 20 euros, maybe even less, 15, 20 euros, something like that, and it will help you a lot with your temperatures which will allow you to push the RAM much more and get much better performance. Or you can get something like this. The next option instead of a RAM fan could be a fan plus a mounting bracket. Let me show you how it looks. That's a picture of a PC from my friend Repo. He's also a tweaker, very good guy. That's his handle if you wanted to check him out. And as you can see, he has a RAM fan mounted on top of his RAM sticks to blow the air on top of them. So what do you need to get? is this kind of bracket. It costs less than one euro. As a tip, if you buy anything from AliExpress, buy it on your phone, the prices will be cheaper, you will get better deals, etc. So you just go grab this, and then you can grab an additional RAM fan. So what I would recommend is Arctic P12 Max. You can go to PC Port Picker, find it, and then change it to your country. So for me, it's gonna be Germany again. And as you can see, I can get it for just eight to 10 euros. So that's how your PC should look after you install your RAM cooler. And that's how your PC should look like after you install a RAM fan on top of your RAM. Enough talking, let's get down to the programs that we need. So the three programs that we need are one, Typhoon Burner, two, TM5, three, HW Info. You can download them here by going to this sheet. This sheet will be available on my Discord 
so make sure to join it in the bio. Another quick notice. If you guys don't know how to restart your CMOS, that means your motherboard settings, make sure to watch this video. It's a one minute video. During RAM overclocking, there might be a situation where you have to restart your motherboard settings, so don't be scared, that's a normal thing. You just have to restart your CMOS. Go watch this video if that thing happens to you. So let's talk about it, what we're gonna be doing exactly. So there are some rules when it comes to DDR4 overclocking on AMD with Samsung VDI. So the sweet spot of your speed is between 3600 megahertz to 3800 megahertz. When it comes to FLCK frequency, you want to have it half of your DRM frequency. So between 1800 megahertz and 1900 megahertz. Then you can take, take a look at the voltages. So depending on your airflow, we're gonna be putting different voltages to make sure that the temperatures are all good. So first we're gonna go to F7 advanced, then go to AI tweaker, and then we're gonna select the memory frequency. We're gonna start at 3600 megahertz. Let's start it. Then FLCK frequency at 1800 megahertz, as the guide says, so half of it. And then we're gonna scroll down lower and we're gonna type in the voltages. We're gonna start with SOC voltage. My motherboard doesn't allow to change it here, but if your motherboard allows it to change it here, just click enter, then select manual or, or override mode, and then go type 1.125. Since I have a cheaper motherboard, I have to do it differently, so I have to go to advanced tab, then go to AMD overclocking, then accept, then go to SOC anchor mode, then put it on enabled, then go to SOC voltage and type 1125. The voltage is in millivolts, which is the same as 1.125 volts. Then we're gonna type in the different voltages. Then we're gonna go down to DRM voltage. And since I have very good airflow, I'm gonna put it at 1.55 volts. If you guys have worse airflow, I would suggest putting it in between 1.45 volts and 1.5 volts. Then VDDG CCD, 1.075. Then VDDG IOT, 1.075. And then VDDP voltage, 1.05. Then we're gonna go up and put in the timings. So let's go to DRM timing control, then TCL 14, then 15, 15, 15, 30, then 45, then 4, then 6, 16, 4, 10, 16, 4, 4. TRFC, this value is dependent on your speed. So since we started with 3600 megahertz, I'm going to put it at 378 and then I'm gonna go down lower, TCWL 14, 8, 1, then 1 again, then put command rate to 1T, then here down mode, put it on enabled. I know, I know that you can put it on disabled and get much better performance, but it takes hours to stabilize, so we're not gonna cover it in this video. Then go one down to power down enable and put it on disabled. If you guys have the option, always put it on disabled, it's very important. Then we're gonna save it, then let's go to the tooltop. Let's go Asus user profile and I'm gonna save it to RAM OC guide and I'm gonna save it to profile 6 then press enter, enter and then press F10, enter and let's go. As you can see guys we are booting and now we're gonna run TM5 stress test for like 10 or 20 minutes depending on your capacity. Before you do that make sure you right click on your TM5 then go to properties then go to compatibility then change for all users run this program as administrator, apply, okay, okay, and then just double click on it. Make sure all your programs are turned off, so exit Vanguard and everything that you have running in the background. Then double click on TM5, then click load config, and load absolute new config. Then you can double click on TM5 again. If it shows you the message and you have to go through, make sure that your available memory is between 800 and 2000 MB. If it's stuck on like 5000, 6000 or 9000, then you gotta restart your PC and run TM5 again. This is a very important step because it will allow you to know if your RAM is stable or not. So we wanna leave it for 10 minutes and you wanna watch for errors here. If you get any red errors here, you gotta exit the stress test and you gotta adjust something. So I know that this thing is stable so you guys want to run it for 10 minutes and you want to see if it's stable. Stable means you don't have any errors, but it's not the final stability. So after 10 minutes, if you're fine, 
then you're gonna close it again. I know that it's gonna be stable, so I'm gonna go to the BIOS, and now we're gonna push the speed even higher. So go to AI Tweaker. When you push the speed, you have to change three values. You have to change your memory frequency, you have to change your FLCK frequency, and then you have to change your TRFC. So go find your TRFC and change it, and change it with the table that you can find in my document on my Discord. So for 3,666, I'm gonna put it on 385. Then go to Tooltab, then go to User Profile, and let's save it to the same profile. Let's then press F10, Enter, and let's go into Windows. As you can see, we're booting. So let's now go run the stress test again. So let's open TM5, and let's now run it for 10 to 15 minutes and 16 gigs and from 20 to 30 minutes and 32 gigs. Let's leave it and let's see the results after 10 minutes. All right, if you guys did the 10 minutes, then you can continue further. I know that it's stable, so I'm gonna go further and higher up the speed. So let's go further to the BIOS. So let's keep pushing the RAM speed. So I'm gonna go to 3733, 1866, and then put TRFC a little bit higher. So to 392 from the table. Then go to Asus user profile, then save it to profile 5, then save it to profile, yes, and let's go. And F10, and let's go. And as you can see, we're booting again. Let's wait a second, and let's run TM5 again. And let's see if we're gonna get an error. All right, boys. So let's say you did the 10 minutes, as as you can see, you have no errors. Let's push it in further. Let's go into the bias. Let's push the speed even faster. So to 3800 megahertz on my side, 1900 megahertz, and DRM timing control. Your RFC to 399. Let's then go save it. F10 and let's go. As you can see, we booted with 3800 megahertz. And now we're gonna stress test it and then let it run. As you can guys see, I'm stable on 3800 megahertz. If you guys get any errors here, just go one back and then leave the stress test for an hour or two. One hour will be enough if you're on 16 gigs, but if you're on 32 gigs, then leave it for two hours till it says that it's finished. If you guys get any errors, just go one down lower, just stress test it again and see the results. And continue until you don't get any errors. If you did one and a half hours of stress test and you don't have any errors, then you can continue playing your game. If you're a more advanced user, you can read my document that you can find on my Discord and continue with lowering the timings if you choose to do so. That was a guide only for the beginners there. So if you're an advanced overclocker, I know you can do better, but that's only the basics for the YouTube video. If you guys want to get overclocked by me, if you guys have any other system than that, you can hop on my website and schedule a full optimization for me. I can guarantee you that it will be worth the money. So don't forget to get optimized by me. Check out my website at tweakingguide.com.